I'm going to explain how evil isn't necessarily real and why it's important to recognize that it is not. Because it's a pretty significant thing within your mind and your being and your psychology. Whether or not you um, believe in this or not. So first of all, let me explain some analogies and then I'll kind of explain some parts of the brain and then tell you the importance of why it's why you should recognize this that it is not real in that way so first of all you have to realize there's not necessarily evil forces or evil entities and and beings in that way right and you can look at this as look at look at it in nature for example this being a whole right oneness one mind in that way that's why if you were to go out in the jungle and you've seen a lion attacking a zebra, you know, you might have an urge to try and stop it, but there would be an understanding to it, right? That there's a subjectivity to it. There's not necessarily a good or evil in that because to the lion, this is great. This is good news. This is the good word. It's going to kill that zebra. It's going to take it back and it's going to have food for itself and its family. To that zebra, that is terrifying. That's evil. <clears throat> That's Ted Bundy, right? And it being a subjective experience, this whole gives way for that. For the mind to kind of choose between good and evil, but for that scenario to happen in itself. Not that there's good and evil in any place in that, right? This being a whole, a subjective experience, it breeds the ability for that situation to happen. And you can kind of recognize in that situation that there's not necessarily anything evil in the line. You know, it's a part of nature. And it's the same thing with the human species. Right? You might look at another human like a Ted Bundy, a Charles Manson, a Gacy, Jeffrey Dahmer. Any kind of horrific killer like that, right? Any kind of horrific mind and say... And they have something evil inside of them, but that's not so at all. Just like with the lion and the zebra, we're animal too. We're mammals, right? We're, we're just at the top of the food chain, the animal kingdom. And we kind of mentally separate ourselves from the rest of nature so we can, unlike them, convince ourselves differently that when we die, you know, we're not just perishing back into the ground, into the hole in that way, right? we got to separate ourselves from them. So we do that with other things, too, that's horrible about ourselves, about the human species, about the human race. But indeed, there's nothing necessarily evil in those people, right? This is a whole. It's a subjective experience. So to them, in that moment, when they're doing that to you, they're like that mountain lion, that lion, that predator, right? And then it's kind of like you're that prey in that moment. And there's not necessarily anything good or evil in between that. It's not correct right there's not a sense of compassion in that other being right something is missing something is absence in them in that way right that's not correct action it's not to say what they're doing is necessarily right in that way but in that same sense from their perspective and from where their subjectivity is at that's what they are okay and you have to understand as well that there's parts of the brain that in these individuals is not functioning properly. Rather, it's the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for uh, guilt and empathy, or the amygdala, which mediates uh, fear and anxiety. Many other parts of the brain too, right, that have things to do with this, with, with an individual acting like that. But those two things especially, if they're not functioning right, they're not going to feel, they're not going to be able to feel remorse for you. They're not going to be able to have any kind of fear or anxiety towards the consequences because the amygdala is not working right for them. And this goes back into some of my other videos where it talks about, you know, someone can hit their head and go from being a very faithful, honest, <clears throat> upfront person to being a liar and a cheater. They hit their head and, and their whole entire being has changed. Their whole entire psychology, right? Like I said in my other videos, some people can hit their head or get in a wreck and not even remember who they are at all. It's like a fresh restart. There's no identity to it at all. 
So to get back on track, these beings, it's not like there's anything evil inside of them making them, them do these things, right? Um, it's that parts of the brain are not functioning right, so therefore they cannot make the right decisions. They're going off impulses that a lot of people actually do have deep within their being, the shadow part of them, to be this animalistic, just uh, animal-like being, right? But their impulses to do that, or the thoughts, can't be purified or pushed away because these parts of the brain are not working. So they come to surface and then they just act on them. And it gets deeper and deeper. The impulses get thicker. Um, it's not to excuse them in any way, right? If, if you catch them, f for sure, keep them detained. Get them in therapy. It's not to excuse them in any way. It's just to make it very clear that there's not necessarily anything evil within these beings. Which is important for yourself and your own growth because think about what the phenomenon of evil is in a way. What it's doing psychologically to you and other people if you deeply believe in it in that way. Off of the bat, it's implying that there is something that is out of your hands in that way. That something could take over you like an evil force or there's just some other forces outside of you that's pretty much responsible for all of this, right? So then psychologically, that's also mentally preparing you to go the opposite way, which is into your own spiritual growth, into any kind of what would be considered like good or godliness, because psychologically too, then you are already assuming that there's just something else above you that is greater and mightier, that Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness, Allah consciousness, whatever you know you want to call it, and it kind of puts you under it. It makes it to where you never really um, even begin to think that you could achieve anything higher than yourself, which is being a human, right? <clears throat> to become super conscious. So it just sets you up for failure in that way. And it makes you unresponsible. You have to, to recognize. And a whole another deep part of spirituality is to deeply recognize that you are responsible. You know, in this present moment, you are responsible and you have to be willing to accept in the present moment anything that is happening to you totally. Um, saying something is evil or an outside force in that way, you're just taking yourself out of the presentness. You're setting yourself psychologically up for um, all kinds of other fears and just kind of putting a barrier, barrier up between real growth because in that you're not really also able to recognize reality for what it is that's another I think important part of spirituality or whatever you want to call that right? I don't even like calling this spirituality like I, I don't say I, I don't want to say I dislike that word but I don't even want to call it that because what I'm doing is just trying to get to the bottom of what reality is in the clearest form possible without any kind of extra magic to it in that way alright so but it's just it's just important to recognize this because if you still believe in evil, you're not really seeing reality for what it is. To the core, utterly for what it is, how raw it is. It's reality. Reality is very raw. So as long as you believe in good and evil in that way, you're still kind of in the fairy tale aspect of the mind, like the imagination you're still kind of like a child in the sense thinking you know I wonder what Santa Claus is like at the North Pole that same device that same area of mind that you're in and you're thinking of when you're talking about Santa Claus and what the North Pole might be like or what he does after Christmas the other 11 months you know um that's that same area you know you're still kind of that's not what is it's not real and the whole point of yourself on that path is to um, to um, come to that kind of realness, right? Not to just lie to yourself in any kind of way. You want to get to the bottom of everything. You want to know what is with no extra layers over it, right? Because <clears throat> in that, you're going to be able to look at yourself fully as well. You have to 
Another important aspect of realizing that evil outwardly as a force that's just from an outside source not being real is um, it makes you realize that within yourself you have this shadow side to you, right? Where you have the ego, which is, you know, the typical word, egotistical, this high and mighty sense somebody has themselves where they can't let other people see them any lesser, you know. Um, but in the ego, that's decorating yourself, right? It's decorating that sense of I away from being animalistic, you know. From you being able to have any of these darker sides in you, whether it's just extreme aggression, aggression, murder, um, bad thoughts. The ego is decorating itself up away from that part of yourself. And so long as you believe in evil or some kind of outside source, you're never really able to recognize your own shadow in that way. Really take that into consideration. You have to be able to accept take full responsibility for your being which includes the fact that you can be very animalistic very raw there's times that you've had uh you've acted totally out of control right you've had good friends or good family members and you've done something completely out of your character later you've thought about this and been like damn you know that wasn't me i don't know why i acted like that that was kind of wild that's your shadow aspect, your aspect of yourself in your unconscious that you haven't ever brought to the awareness, right? It's not to discard anything. This isn't to discard the ego or the shadow in that way, right? You're just becoming aware of it and watching it enough to see through them. See them for what they are. So long as you're not ever aware of this, you know, what's behind your ego, the shadow aspect of yourself that I guess um, is what others would label as evil, you're not ever going to really be able to become fully whole in that way yourself. See how that works? See how tricky the ego is? So long as there's other people out there that are doing horrific things, shadowistic, animalistic things, and you're convinced that that's just evil, and that's nothing you could ever, ever do, and that's not in the human species, that's not right, you know, that's an outside evil force. You're never going to be able to accept it in yourself, your own shadow, your own dark sides, right? That's very important to this. <clears throat> it's not just about recognizing all the great things about yourself and just sitting in the present and waiting for something to to happen. You know, in that present presentness, you're gonna. This is gonna be a gradual process, right? You're gonna be present. You're gonna be trying to achieve the state of no mind and having this recognition. But while you're doing these things. You're not just going to be becoming aware in the present moment. You're going to be becoming aware of yourself and these dark sides of yourself. Because in that meditation, you're going to be separating yourself from just all that unconscious action and thought, right? Usually you're in with the unconscious action and thought. And you're not aware you're doing it, right? But the more you become aware of yourself, the more you become present. And you go to that spot, you kind of distance yourself to where you can watch these unconscious actions within yourself. And stop it almost before it happens. So, in saying that, that's why it's important to really accept the fact that evil is not real in that way. Think about it like this. In most, in a lot of, you know, religious texts, I don't know about necessarily a lot of other religions, but I know in a lot of uh, the Bible's text, it says it itself that God is all that is good and evil, right? He's created all that is good and evil. Don't take it so, you know... So much so, like, uh, there's two separations in that, like, good and evil, right? It's implying that God being the whole, right? The whole being God, in that way, consciousness. Within this whole, there is the line and the zebra. There is that good and that evil. What your mind, mind, perceives as good and evil. And you, you can reach your own state of holiness, that Godhead, right? That state of no mind, and then above that where you're becoming aware of this as a whole in recognition. Or it could go the totally op opposite way, the complete absence of that wholeness, which is ego, shadow, and what people would call like evil. That's just not the case. That's also why, if you go back to some kind of um, religious text... Your cross would say things like, you can do all I can do, or the kingdom of heaven is within you, right? 
and I say this not to like um, say that the Bible or anything in that way is real or that that character was real. This is all metaphorical to me. All religious texts, all religions, right? But it is to say that in those quotes he's implying, this character's implying that you can achieve that godliness, right? You can do that. There's not a separation from you and it. It's already there. You just have to become aware of it. Aware of yourself and what you are. So, in a sense, if you're outwardly like, that's good, that's evil, that's good, that's evil. You're just separating yourself from the whole even more. You're creating a barrier to keep yourself from being able to recognize... This as that whole and all the animalistic sides in yourself that is a part of this whole. All that is good and evil, right? <clears throat> if you take a lot of those religious texts literal, it doesn't make very much sense. But if you can look at it from a metaphorical sense and add it all up together, a lot of it, it is implying this oneness. that God is pretty much the whole, right? And when I say God, I mean godliness, not necessarily a noun, not an individual, just an openness, love. And look at it like that. What else does the Bible and religious text say? That God is love, but what is love? I'll make another video on this. But in a short sense, it's when two become one, right? It's a selflessness. The whole is what? As a consciousness. A selflessness, like the flame I explained before. If you light a candle in the night, is that flame the same flame in the morning when you come back? No. It's not the same flame. There's no self yet. It's a continuum. And if you ever want to actually be able to come present and have that recognition to become one, you in reality, as a whole, and become that state of love, godliness... You're not going to be able to hold on to those outward concepts of good and evil, necessarily. Which in another sense, or another topic, but in the, in the same way that a lot of other aspects of reality are lesser or more degrees of the same one phenomenon, like cold and hot, darkness and light, love and fear, so is <clears throat> good and evil. It's just lesser or more degrees of this same one phenomenon. That's why, think about it, when someone's doing something, they're having fun that is good, there's extreme excitement in it, right? And to that person that is doing something extremely bad, oftentimes there's what? Excitement, some kind of, you know, some kind of excitement, deviousness, that there's some kind of pleasure coming from that. It's just an extreme of the other side of good. Those po that one polarity. Of that one same energy, right? The polarity of that same one energy. An extreme to the left, an extreme to the right. Almost like a fever. So I do think it's funny that as technologically advanced as society has become, and as wise as society has become, whether it's through um, our politicians and your priest, I find it funny and odd that they still preach, you know, that sense of evil like that. As if they don't want you to come to your, to your own sense of power, right? To your own realization. Look at, look at your money, you know. On the money, it has that pyramid with the all-seeing eye at the top of it. It almost gives you a sense that they know something you don't, right? And almost in the way that they can be cold-hearted. It's almost as if they know, you know. They become aware of the fact that this is a whole and it's very animalistic. But they just couldn't achieve since they, they can't feel compassion. Like, you know, you always say these high CEOs that are rich... The highest people up there on the totem pole. If they're psychopaths, they don't have feelings. Um, yeah, that's 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 most likely true. The amygdala, 
prefrontal cortex of the brain, all these parts most likely aren't operating right. But they've gotten up there high enough to become intelligent enough and aware enough that, you know, this is a whole in that way. Maybe there's some kind of oneness to it. So there's no judgment after this. Therefore, they can just do whatever they want in that way. Because the things I talk about on this channel and on my page, I don't see how others that are um, just supposed to be higher than me up there, right, the lead of the world, aren't aware of this. Because you can recognize these things, right? You can recognize this being one, how cold and hot are one thing, darkness and light are one thing, how there is no self. You can recognize these things. That doesn't mean you're necessarily going to go all the way, become a state of love and compassion, right? And um, just a witness, right? But you can become aware of these things and kind of discard it and still be egotistical. You know. Go back into the unconscious, I guess, if you will. So, just be aware of that. I think it's important to recognize that evil isn't real for a lot more reasons than just your typical religious debate and this isn't to make excuses for those that do horrific things it's just to elaborate on the fact that even the Bible says all sins are equal all sins are ego that's what it's saying pretty much and ego isn't something uh, supernatural right. but for sure leave uh, some comments below if you agree with this or disagree or if you have any other insights, because if you have a good insight or any kind of extra <clears throat> idea that I find would be beneficial for people to know about, I'll screenshot it and I'll put it in one of the uh, videos and I'll talk about it as well. So they'll know who you are, that it was your idea, and we'll discuss it. I guess my point is just take responsibility and that's how you'll get to the ultimate. That's how you'll actually find what truth is. Evil in that way has no force to it. Only the truth does. Only awareness does. You can have a mountain of lies and it cannot do anything to the truth. 